Caitlin, can you hear me? Hi, now I can hear you. The entire okay, time we did not hear anything. Am can you hear, I up? hear us now? Yes. Am I up next? Yes, uh, the floor is yours. So, Caitlin, okay, you thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that. Good afternoon, Mr. President and members of the board. In, in front of you is the annual comprehensive financial report for fiscal year 2020-21 compiled after completion of the 2020-21 audit. As you notice, the document is now called the annual comprehensive financial report the Governmental Accounting Standards Board, GASB Statement 98, has officially changed the name from the from Comprehensive Annual Financial Report to Annual Comprehensive, Comprehensive Financial Report and the acronym to ACFR. The immediate adoption and usage of the new name and acronym is encouraged by GASB. The district has elected to implement GASB 98 starting with the fiscal year ended June 30th, 2020-2021. Also attached, you will find the auditor's required com communication letter and the auditor's report in accordance with the government auditing standards. Tiemann, Ramirez, and Smith audit firm has issued an unmodified or a clean opinion for fiscal year 2020-21 audit. Some of the financial highlights during the fiscal year ended June 30th, 2021, the district total asset exceeded liability by approximately 63.3 million. Of this amount, 19.5 million is unrestricted and available to meet the district ongoing obligations. Net position of the solid waste fund decreased by approximately 295,000. The district adopted a deficit budget of 358,500 in the solid waste fund. However, expenses were lower than expected. The wastewater fund net position increased by approximately 130,000. This increase was due to a capital contribution of two manholes donated by the developer. The annual transfer in from the solid waste fund for building rent and the settlement reimbursement from envir environment rental services for the VAC call truck service costs. As of June 30th, 2021, the district is 92% funded for its pension liability, and the district other post-employment benefit, OPEP, is fully funded. Mr. Calhoun, partner of the audit firm, is here today to go over the audit and answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Caitlin. Good afternoon. Uh, this evening, I'll be pleased by presenting the results of our audit for the fiscal year 2021. I do appreciate, I want to express my appreciation to dis the district staff for their assistance throughout the audit process. Uh, due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, we've had to continue to perform the audit remotely, but we still had it, held it in the same regard as if we were on site and still looked at the same number of documents, uh, other required uh, procedures as if we're on site. So the irrigation performed a financial statement audit was essentially a uh, audit to give an opinion on the district's financial statements. We performed, uh, accomplished this by performing test balances and transactions amongst uh, other internal control testing and other procedures. Uh, but our ultimate objective is to express an opinion that the balances and disclosures within the financial statements are fairly presented. We have completed the process and have issued a um, modified opinion, also referred to as clean opinion on the financial statements. Within the financial statements uh, is our independent auditor's report. Within it, is, uh, within it says that overall management is responsible for the uh, preparation and fair presentation of the financial statements. We as the auditor are, uh, are responsible to express opinions on the financial statements to obtain reasonable assurance that the financial statements are free from material misstatement. Uh, within the report uh, uh, is a what's referred to as an emphasis matter paragraph. This is just letting the reader know that there was a change in uh, account, um, 
accounting pronouncements. Uh, Kaylin did touch on it earlier, which is on GASB 98, which simply changed the um, title of the report from Comprehensive Annual Financial Report to Annual Comprehensive Financial Report, as the acronym for the previous uh, title was uh, not in line in um, a political sense. <clears throat> In addition to the auditor's report within the financials, we also issue several other reports and letters. The first and foremost is the internal control and compliance report. This is required as part of the government auditing standards. It's uh, used to communicate any significant deficiencies or material weaknesses in the design of the district's internal controls. Happy to report that we have no findings or exceptions as noted during our audit. The last letter that we issue is uh, the uh, audit communication letter, also referred to as the SAS 114 letter. This discusses the conduct of the audits. Uh, within it, we discuss cer uh, certain specific areas, such as uh, management's use of estimates. Uh, management does use estimates within their financial reporting, such as investments, depreciation, OPEB, and net pension liability. Uh, overall, there were no issues in performing the audit, and there was no significant uh, misstatements or audit just, uh, adjustments necessary. Uh, that concludes my presentation. I'll be happy to address any questions you might have. Any of the board members have questions? Art? I have a question, uh, maybe not to you, but maybe to Mark. You know, 92% funded pension liability, should we consider getting that to 100%? Um, you know, Director Perry, you, you'll probably never be at 100%. Every time you go to, uh, to fund or to get caught up with your... Um, uh, required contribution to have it be fully funded. The very next eva uh, valuation report that comes out, you will once again be underfunded because those valuation reports run two years in arrears. Do you think that at some point we need to consider that though? Because I know we talk about this every year. Uh, in, in my opinion, um, you don't. You're pretty well funded um, uh, compared to other agencies at that percent level. Um, but it's always something the board can consider if the board has uh, extra funds that um, uh, you're looking to spend someplace and you're wanting to buy down that pension liability, you certainly can do that. That's your prerogative. Okay, thank you. Do any of the other board members have questions? If not, um, let me go back. Oh, I just shut my computer off. Is this a receiving file? Yeah, yes, yes, yeah. Okay, I have to get back on. I should be using one of the district computers. I probably know how to use it better. Oh, and Alani saying, you know, just. Here's a copy of the agenda. Okay, I'm back. We're in the general manager's reports and item number two is receive and file the 2022 sewer rate preliminary draft report. Thank you, Joshua, Caitlin. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We'll move on to item number two. Thank you, board president and uh, Mr. President, board director. So prior to tonight, the board received three presentations regarding water rate adjustments. On December 14th, staff and district consultant RDN presented the board with five rate options to consider. The board selected one of the five options and directed staff to report back tonight to receive and file the 2022 sewer rate study preliminary draft report and approve setting a public hearing date to be on February 28, 2022, to consider adopting the new rate. Attached in your staff report is the preliminary draft report for the sewer rate study. In the preliminary draft report includes the two-year two rate option that the board recommended on December 14th and is described in your staff report tonight. Notices informing property owners about the February 28, 2022 public hearing will be mailed not less than 45 calendar days prior to the hearing. On January 26, 2022, at 5.30 p.m., the district will host a sewer rate study workshop for the public. The workshop will be, hybrid, will be a hybrid meeting at HQ where members of the public can participate in person or virtually via Zoom. In addition, the district will be creating a, a specific page on its website dedicated to the sewer rate study on the webpage will include staff reports, slide presentation, video recording of board meetings, proposed rates, and the written study prepared by RDN. The webpage will also have a link to submit questions. Staff is recommending that the board directors receive and file the 2022 sewer rate study preliminary draft report and approve setting a public hearing date on February 28, 2022 to 
consider adopting new wastewater rates to go in effect on July 1st, 2022. Happy to answer any questions you may have. Hi. So February 28th is our regularly scheduled board meeting. Right. Yes. yes. We, don't we have to have a separate meeting away from the board meeting do, to do a Prop 218, or is it okay to do it with a board meeting? Alan's shaking. He said yes, so we're okay. Yeah, we do. Yeah, I, I couldn't remember since no. it's been so long, but no, um, so the as part of the regular meeting, it's just the same thing. We, we used to do it as a separate meeting. That's what I thought. And we, we used to do it at City Hall and they would come in and ask oh. questions and then yeah. we would go through the process and then, but that's mm -hmm. changed because we haven't they hadn't waited that for a long time. Okay, I'm, I'm fine with that. Thanks for uh, but I, I have another comment though. What does that come out to uh, per month? Because we're moving from 92 to 101. Is that like a dollar per month? Hold on, probably give me a second. It's a, it's a little less in the first year. You need Caitlin to figure that out for you, Scott. Are you okay? So, like $9 more per year. That's, seven, that's 75 cents a month. It's, it's, we're paying right now $7.70 a month. First year, I'll go up to uh, eight dollars and and forty four cents a month. So that would be the first year, and then the second year, it will go. It will be nine dollars and eighty seven cents. Yeah, my point is we should use those figures when. Yes. No. Yes, agreed. Yes, we will. That's still probably going to be one of the lowest in the county. It, it is. In fact, uh, in the in in the preliminary report, it has a. A survey, uh, the graph, the bar graph that we've done previously, and we're still below the average. The average is around thirteen dollars a month, so we're below the average for those for those uh, districts that are just charging um, wastewater rates for collection, not not treatment, just collection only. And j just to follow up uh, to Director Perry, I just I didn't think of your thing, but. Um... Were you suggesting actually showing the dollar amount instead yeah, of the percentage? Yeah, when, we, when we discuss it and, yeah. and the information going out, we should use those figures. I, I would highly agree. Uh, $8 or whatever versus $7 on a piece of paper looks better than 17%. <laughs> so when we're putting this out there in the public form, I would avoid the percentages as much as possible. So. And and even on the website or, or whatever media we use, actually in 2006 we raised the rates 50 percent because they were 19 dollars a year. <laughs> or no, we raised them 19 dollars a year because they were 39 or something, yeah. and it was, <laughs> and we had the same discussion. Because as I think uh, there's some stuff going on at uh, Mesa Water and. They're getting a lot of heat because people are talking percentages. And it would just, when you're like, oh, I'll pay one extra dollar, that's a little bit more palatable then. <laughs> so, darn social media. <laughs> yeah. um, any, any other director's input or questions? If I'll, not, this is our. I'll, I'll move to approve the setting of a public hearing date for February 28, 2022 to consider adopting new wastewater rates to go into effect July 1, 2020. I'll second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Um, okay, we'll go on to um, a, a pride suggestion. I believe that's what we call the, the process where, where we uh, reward staff um, for good ideas. And, and this one happens to be uh, for Joel Ortiz. Uh, he recommended um, a way to save $50,000 in, uh, in, in a mantle replacement project down near the Corona Del Mar High School. Newport Harbor. Newport Harbor. Yeah. Okay. Um, any, does, any, does anyone have any questions? Or? I'd like to move for approval with a comment. Uh, we discussed this item yeah. a couple meetings ago, and uh, I just want to thank uh, Mr. Ortiz because either he was listening or someone told him about our discussion. And so great idea to cut some money out. So yeah. I think it's well-deserved. If, if I can add, yes. So following your board meeting, every we have an all 
staff meeting. We call it all hands meeting the following day and brief staff board's action. And so Mark gave that same presentation to the board, to the staff the following the next day. And that's when Joel raised his hand and goes, I have another, I have another suggestion. And that's what it came out of. Great job, Joel. So thank you. And thank you, Scott, for doing that. Mark, did you want to speak to that at all? Sounds good. I, I have just one quick question. Just refresh me. We've given different under the rewarding ideas program. The level of the reward is based on the the uh, amount of savings on the project, right? If we can tangibly uh, yeah. determine what those savings are, some of the some of the ideas there's no real tangible savings. Maybe it's just a a, a, a safety improvement. Uh, so there's no tangible savings in, in the minimum amount is $150. Uh, this amount that you're considering tonight is the highest that you ever approved. We've never approved this amount. Before. That, that's why I brought it up. Yeah. So this is this is and this is the maximum amount an uh, employee yeah. can, can, can earn is a thousand dollars. I didn't see that in the program. I don't remember seeing dollar amounts. It was in there somewhere. I, I, you saw the thousand one, didn't you? No, no, I mean in the actual policy, right. district policy, oh. it doesn't specify the amounts. It's it's in there. Oh, on uh, reward levels, is that what you're talking about? Okay, I got it. Hey, we have a motion on the floor. And all in favor say aye. Aye, aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? Number four, we'll adopt resolution 2021-949. Uh, supporting feds, supporting PFAS legislation to protect ratepayers and water and wastewater agencies. Um, do any of the directors want to discuss this item? Do you, do you want to discuss it all, Scott? Or I got a quick, I'm sure I can briefly okay. talk about this, this uh, item. So the Orange County Water District is is working with water agencies and stakeholders to address per polyfluorical substance or PFAS in the Orange County groundwater basin. PFAS was the original chem chemical used to make Teflon for nonstick cookware. And PFAS chemicals are widely used to coat paper and cardboard wrapper for fast food and baking goods. Unfortunately, these chemicals were discharged in the Orange County groundwater basin by various companies through the years. And now Orange County Water District is spending over $1 billion cleaning up the water. It is also unfortunate that Orange County Water District is at risk of being sued under current federal pollution laws for an act they did not commit or create. Now, the good news is that the United States Congress is considering a law that would make public water and wastewater agencies exempt from this liability. The Orange County Water District, with concurrence with, of Orange County Sanitation District, requesting CMSD assistance by adopting resolution of support and signed letters addressed to both California Senator and to the Orange <laughs> County Congressional Delegation backing Orange County Water District's position regarding pending PFAS legislation. Staff has recommended that the Board of Directors approve adopting resolutions 2021-949 and authorize President Uten to sign letters supporting federal PFAS substance legislation to protect ratepayers and water wastewater agencies. Thank you. President, a uh, question. Um, was this uh, proposed amendment, because it passed the House basically along party lines, was this amendment proposed in the House or is it now just being considered for the Senate review. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't know where the position is in, in Congress. So I, don't, I can't answer that. All right. You have the letter ready already for? Yes, yeah. yes, Nolan has the letter. If you approve it, we will give it to President Uden to sign tonight and we'll send it out. Could we I, I probably have it here in the packet if you want to see it. Yeah, no, I, I, saw, I saw the letter. I was just curious when this came about because it'll be, the whole thing will be an interesting Senate debate for sure. Yeah, um, actually, a lot of the PFAS in our Orange County Water District groundwater it comes from the upstream sewage treatment plants uh, and other sources. Um, but a lot of it, a lot of it comes in from the from those the upstream Sanford. sewage treatment plants. Mm -hmm. Down from San Bernardino. Yeah, Inland Empire, down the San Ana River, right. basically underground into the groundwater supply, and, and a lot of the northern. Um, um, entities or cities uh, are spending a ton of money cleaning this up. Or Yorba Linda, 
you can't go to a water meeting without everybody talking about PFAS, your Belinda, for whatever reason, every one of their wells, right? Many of their wells. And they, and they're, you know, that that's the groundwater coming down the, the you know, they 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 take it out of the upper reaches of the and to answer director Eccles, I don't think the house has passed it yet. Oh, I think it's still under consideration both houses. I know there aren't there two letters. Yeah, there's two letters in here, one to the Senate and one to one to the House, our local House representative. Yes, I think it's safe to assume we're still sending a letter to the uh, delegate, the Congress delegations. We have to assume that it still hasn't been passed by Congress That's yet. It's still being considered. I understand. And because I did read that it, it the initial bill I believe passed the House, but again, whenever you change a bill between when you know. <clears throat> I'll have to go back to my high school civics to understand it all, but all you gotta do is remember the cartoon show. <laughs> yep, school or rock or whatever it was with a little bill. Yeah. How a bill becomes a law. Yeah. <laughs> Did we already uh, make a motion to? No, we need a motion in action. Okay. I'll make a motion to adopt resolution twenty twenty one nine forty nine. Give authority to the president to sign that. I'll second it. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, number five, consider adopting resolution 2021-950, uh, certifying that certain changes, charges are delinquent uh, and unpaid for 60 days and requesting that the county treasurer record file these charges as a lien for Mr. Bedford at 1826 Pomona Avenue, Costa Mesa, California. Many of the directors, do, do we need more explanation on this? I just had a quick question. I think I asked this every time we talk about this item. You still have not heard from the? No, we have not. The owner of the property. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think we were pretty lenient with him. We could have charged him substantially more. Uh, do I have a motion? I'll move. I'll move. Oh. I have a question. Is Peter Bedford, is he the resident owner or the? He's the property owner. But he lives there also? No, he does not. Okay, so he's a property owner? Yes. Okay. And you, you have his address where he, he lives in Huntington Beach. Mr. Pre Mr. President, just a, one quick question. Uh, if we approve this tonight, does the resident get this letter? And before it goes to uh, the uh, county or does it go to the county? How does that work from if this passes tonight? This passing us, then we send a resolution to the county, and then they place the the lien on, on the property tax roll. I think the question is, do, should that, are we going to notify Mr. Bedford that a lien's coming? We've already did. That's what, that's why the sixty day delinquents. We've notified him. Okay, he's well aware of this. We've been telling him this for months. This could happen. I have another question about okay when we give him, give the lien to the county, does the interest keep adding up? Question that I don't know. I think once you bill them, it's it's solid. Once you have the amount on the resolution, so that's the amount they're going to put on on the lien. What's the amount on the resolution? So if he doesn't pay it for twenty years, it still stays the same amount. If the question is, does interest accrue after, in addition to the dollar amount we have? It does accrue. I think after ten years, we'll have to renew this um, because a, a liens generally last only ten years, and you have to renew them and apply for a renewal. Are we keep track of that, or how do we do that? County. I mean, we'll have to calendar that. Yeah. I mean, we should calendar because the county's not going to tell us that, are they? Mm -hmm. No. So we have to calendar that to make sure we. Yeah. Is it a ten-year thing, or is it? Is that the uh, first time you can do that? Can is that you have to wait ten years before you change the lien? Uh, cha change it? You mean renew it? Renew it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And if he tries to do any transaction on the property, sell it, refinance it, whatever he does. They're going to know yeah. there's a lien on the property from yeah. the, from the sanitary district. Okay. Again, I'll I'll move the adoption of resolution 2021-950, certifying charges remain delinquent and unpaid, requesting the county recorder file those charges as a lien. I'll second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Now we'll move on to the engineer's reports. Um, receive and file a capital improvement project status report. Mark, do you want to give a report or? We've all read happy, the report. I'm happy to, President Newton. 
Um, we have about eight active projects going on right now out of the that I've reported on. We've added a few with uh, the current year budget. But President, I'm welcome, or I'm, I'm very happy to say that it appears to me as though presidents will finally be done at the end of January. Uh, 20, done. 2022? I mean, yeah, which yes, year? 2022. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had so much fun on that project that I was, <laughs> I was, I was like suggesting to Scott that we do a ribbon cutting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would further say that 19th Street Force Main has been done, and you're going to hear an agenda item about that tonight. And then uh, we're very actively pursuing calcium removal phase one. I'm thinking that will be bid sometime after the first of the year. Uh, DIP phase two and phase three, we're actively working on those. Um, once we're done, both of those projects, DIP uh, rehab phase one and two, will be done this fiscal year. And then after that, I believe we only have one more phase left and we'll be done refurbishing all of the ductile iron pipe. So I'll have caught you up and we'll finish up uh, with one last phase. Uh, Avamore, West Bluff, they're both in progress. We've been meeting actively with Orange County Sanitation on Geisler, that's moving forward. We're gonna start designing that project and I'm guessing we'll have a project to bid here uh, end of January at the latest. Uh, but it, again, it, that depends a little bit on uh, OCSD giving us their final approval. We've, they've given us a verbal, but they're checking on how they want us to make the physical connection to their, to their box. Uh, sewer lining project, that's actively going on, and I would like to get those bid and done this year again. Grade four, four sewer projects, that's in progress as well. And then the, I know uh, President Newton's favorite is the air release rehab and removal project, and we'll get that. Uh, at least one of the phases done this year. Uh, and then on the 21st Street Bridge, I was talking to our general manager this afternoon, and our plan is to be done with that one. I'm going to guess uh, early January. We'll have that air vac. We're going to remove the air, air, air release uh, valve, but we're going to leave the capability of bleeding air off, and we will be planning to bleed off air once a year when we do maintenance on all the other air vacs. And then the last one, which I'll, I'm getting uh, four bids uh, on, and then our general manager will make an award on is City of Newport Beach. So I'm happy to answer any detailed questions about those projects or any other project in, in the attached reports. Good question, Paul. Art? Okay, when you say this year, you talk about 2022? Our fis when I say this year, yeah, I'm talking about our fiscal year. So by July, uh, June 30th, I will have um, quite a bit of this work. Completed. At least that's my goal. I promised Director Eccles that I, my goal would be to complete and catch us up with all the work. Uh, and he's trying to hold me to that. But uh, <laughs> so I'm riding my bicycle as fast, I'm pedaling as fast as I can. <laughs> a quick, quick wait. You know those studies we did? <laughs> Time escapes. The smoke studies that we did with the fairgrounds. And mm -hmm. yeah. Are we anywhere with that or is that com com done? I guess my understanding is uh, that smoke process did help us determine that there were a lot of uh, open drains and other, I'll say, connections that allowed rainfall to get into the okay. system. My understand, my uh, furthermore, my understanding is the county has worked with um, the sanitation district to basically either cover up, um, put some type of a mat over them, and other things in order to eliminate or reduce the potential to get rainwater into our system. Uh, when our last engineering tech was here back in February, March, I sent him out a couple of times during the rainfall to go out and make sure that the covers were on and that everything was, um, I'll say, as advertised uh, in preparation for those rainfalls. Um, we, I didn't do that last time because I haven't had a chance to get out there myself, but I'll be working with staff uh, after the first year to do a reinspection, I'll call it, of the fairgrounds. But my understanding is a lot of that work has already been done, and we've coordinated with the county on um, probably all of the connections. Yeah, it was the, the it was the fairgrounds. That, yes, the fairgrounds. Okay, exactly. That I want okay, good. Right now. That's what we're. And I didn't know that that we've come that far. That's good. Yeah, it's good. So were, were, so. were there any others besides the fairgrounds? That you know of, you know, I'd have to go back and and. We I did skim, some of the I ones in in uh, 
Mesa North out there along, uh, or Mesa Del Mar. Mesa Del Mar. Mesa Del Mar. Well, me? well, let me ask you, one, one of my goals uh, the board assigned to me is to uh, review um, OCSD's uh, I and I studies yeah. and come up with a plan to reduce inflow. And so I did review their, their, their plan and, and in, their, in their studies, they did indicate that the uh, Fairview Road trunk uh, is, which our lines do connect to, is experienced inflow. So the plan is to identify those lines that uh, connect into that trunk, to televise those lines, uh, maybe plug and seal those, those uh, manholes on those lines and see if that makes an impact to reduce the inflow into the Fairview Road. Because at one time, OCSD was considering enlarging that, that trunk line because there was so much inflow. Um, don't know where they are at that point, at this point, but uh, that's our plan to attack um, the inflow and, on Fairview. Now, as far as the um, fairgrounds goes, uh, as Mark said, uh, the fairgrounds made a ton of improvements on their property. The smoke testing did help. We were able to identify uh, where some possible inflows, and we did, did corrective measures. In fact, I haven't, we haven't tested the ingress uh, rainfall from this last week's rain, which we'll do later this year or early next year. But the last storm prior to that, our, our, the, the calculations was below the 2% goal, ingress goal, that, that, is, um, that we're trying to achieve. So. That's what we're planning on doing with our inflow. Yeah, yeah actually, actually, Orange County Sand District has uh, put off, um, based on the reductions in flow, they've put off the, enlar the, the enlargement of the Fairview trunk sewer. Yeah, I was just going to add that, uh, prof um, I don't want to call you professor, but uh, <laughs> President, <laughs> President Newton. <laughs> His wife is the professor. <laughs> yes, she is. <laughs> She's also the boss, <laughs> but but I was going to say I, I talked with Wendy Smith and uh, uh, Adam Nazaroff because they were quizzing me what you know they saw a dramatic downturn in the flow in that Fairview trunk and they were wondering what we were doing and I was talking to them about the manhole plugging program that Steve Cano has implemented uh, the lining work that Rob Hamers started and we've actually got quite a bit of of liner in and so with all the various activities. We have been making uh, strides. Um, I have promised our general manager that I'll continue to do what Rob was doing and get our flows down. I don't know how much more I can get them down, but I will continue to work on that. Um, I did talk to Scott about trying to figure out which trunk lines. Uh, we have done CCTV, and I, and I can't tell you from the CCTVs of which lines the, ma the major inflow is. So we may have to do a study or two to, to really get into which of our sub trunks um, are causing that additional inflow. But that's something that we'll have to work on. And I'm gonna say, we're gonna need a little bit of time for those studies and then to implement improvements for that. It's nothing that I don't think we can do in a couple of months anyway. I have, I've always thought some of that was coming from the Costa Mesa High School, because they have a lot of areas that could water could flow into that we probably haven't checked. You got the high school and the junior high school right there. And maybe so, I'll have to go back and reread that um, study that we did for the fairgrounds, because I would think whatever smoke tests we did on Arlington would also show up at, at that particular high school. You're talking about the high school off of um, Fairview off in, in Arlington? Yeah. Yeah, and there's a middle school there too. So, And then I know that President Newton has uh, mentioned to me that uh, the Army base that used to be here many, 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 many years ago they built a lot of the sewers, and at that point, there may still be some, I'll call them, um, you know, the military. They, they build connections and other things just to drain, drain. But we, you know, we haven't looked at, at Orange Coast College either, but he was explaining to me that there might be some things over there that we might want to look at. Yeah, I think I, um, the original Army base it was way, way north. Orange Coast College was part of it, Costa Mesa. High school was part of it, and they were not very diligent about when they had a puddle. They made a storm drain that went into the sewers. Um, at least on the Orange County uh, Fairgrounds site, there was also a lot of residences there for the military, and um, those were being when we did the smoke testing. Those uh, the water used to pond over there near Arlington the Road, and. Um, a lot of those uh, cleanouts were unsatisfactory. So um, it, it's a work in progress. I think 
the initial, when we put the flow meter in, staff went out and they put dye in a bunch of the storm drains and found that those storm drains went right in the So their initial work um, took, a, took us a long ways, uh, but we should probably look at those. Well, even at Fairview Hospital, they have some of those old army things as part of their, outside their main hospital. Yeah. I'm going along the whole five. Yeah. All those old buildings. Yeah. Well, the work that we've done has been substantial, and but there is some more trim to be done, I'm sure. I, 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 you know, as far as Fairview Hospital, I, or Fairview, whatever it's called, um, developmental center, yeah. um, until a decision's made by the city as to what they're going to do with that, I don't think we ought to spend a lot of time in there other than reminding them they need to clean their system what's you know you know what i mean i i'd hate to see us go in there and do a lot of work and then yeah. have some developer come in and I don't turn it all over i don't think yeah. let us do any, any work probably so, not so far they haven't let, yeah, so, so far they've, they've turned we, down every every opportunity yeah. for us to help them we've had that on the agenda before yeah. but it was on harbor boulevard that is affected by the uh, hospital and they don't want to do anything we sent them information and they said they don't want to do anything. No, so that's, that's where that's it lies till the next thing goes in there. <laughs> well, that, that they don't want to do anything. Our ordinances prohibit, and Orange County Sand District's ordinances, our policies prohibit um, storm drain direct connections to the sewer. So eventually, if we deem it a, a problem worth pursuing, I think we have the wherewithal to do that. Um, Mark, do you have any more? Um, yeah, okay, that's a receiving file. Uh, thank you, Mark. And you, I think you're up for the 19th Street Force Main. You've already started on that. Yeah, uh, the the project 326 19th Street Force Main. It basically replaced the old asbestos Force Main that we had. It's the work was completed back on around the 26th of October. Uh, we have received as built drawings from the contractor. Uh, we've done all the final paperwork. Our consultant is uh, basically saying that everything is done on that project. So uh, as we're supposed to, I am asking today for you to consider uh, our recommendation to accept the improvements as completed and file a notice of completion, exonerate labor and materials bond 35 days after the notice of completion has been recorded, and to exonerate faithful performance bond one year after the completion has been recorded. Uh, and uh, this time I'll take any questions you have on the 19th Street Force Main project. I just have to ask, I assume no, but no, uh, no stop notices, no change orders, nothing outstanding, correct? No, the project had a few change orders, but it was all within the, uh, I'll say that actually less than the 10% that, that you had. Um, the board, our board has approved back when we awarded the project. And um, one of them was the upstream, or excuse me, the downstream man, manhole, which is the manhole that the force main discharges into. When we popped that lid, the whole top of it had collapsed. We were on the verge of having, a, I'll say, a, a sinkhole. And it may not be car size, but it was probably, I'm going to say, potential to be about four, four foot in diameter, five foot in diameter, and about uh, four foot deep. So we had to we had to take some action on that one, and then because of a city paving uh, project that that we were notified on after we bid our project, uh, turns out we had to break up instead of doing it in the in the in the way that the contractor bid on it. We forced him to take some things out of sequence, and he had to actually break up the construction into three phases, where he had to do the phases in Whittier Avenue. Um, in a different time order. And so, uh, for example, paving, our paving had to be done in Whittier before the city came in to do their, their work. And so, because instead of him paving everything at one time, we broke up the paving into two sections, which means there was an extra, it wasn't much of an extra, but there was extra to pay the uh, on and off for the paving contractor, stuff like that. Another change order occurred when we went to start up the new facility, we realized that the two check valves in our existing vault weren't holding. And so 
we can't run that pump station without good solid check valves because the water would drain back after we finished pumping down the wet well because the check valves weren't holding, the water would drain back down and, and pour back into the wet well. And so it partially refill itself. And then when you kick on those pumps, it's, there's a big surge because you're filling an empty, an empty sewer pipe. So, so we had to do something with that and that was an unknown situation. So other than a couple of those little things like that, um, we really, there weren't many change orders and, and uh, everything was done under, under the authorized 10%. Thank you. Is that the correct address? Uh, 326? Yeah, uh, I believe it is. Oh, no, no, you're, no. Uh, 326 is the project, is the project yeah. number. 19th Street is the force main. Okay, I'm sorry. I yeah. guess it is a little confusing. I never thought about it as being a, a potential uh, street address. Yeah, because <laughs> I used to live in that area. Okay. And then, because that stops like at 800. That's why I said that. Uh, and, and in fact, I think it's, the address, the legal address for our pump station is 1035 West 19th Street, Costa Mesa. 1035 West 19th. Okay. Just curious. I'm sorry, I misread that. <laughs> okay, we do have a motion. I'll move to approve proceeding with the uh, notice of completion. I'll second it. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Any abstentions? Uh, do, do we have a treasurer's report tonight, Mark? Uh, no, there's no items this evening, Mr. President. Okay, and then we're going to attorney's reports. Uh, this is a resolution uh, um, that we have to approve monthly, authorizing remote meetings. Uh, I'll, move, I'll move for approval of resolution 2021-951 based on the current situation. I'll second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we go on to uh, local meetings, report on local meetings. Um, my printer wasn't working and <laughs> I don't have an up-to-date report, but I will be submitting it with my uh, reimbursement report on the Orange County Sand District. I did attend two meetings there. I do report on them, but uh, the district is, san sanitary district is not charged for those meetings, they pay me. Um, uh, Sarfa, did you have a meeting? No meeting this month. Uh, his doc, Secretary Shaver. Oh, okay, his doc. Um, on 11-2, his doc had a board meeting and we're doing Zoom right now. And we're continuing to do Zoom because uh, their facility is being uh, restructured so that you know people can do Zoom and yet streamline and the whole bit. So anyway, we did that way. And uh, we talked about the uh, ledge report. We also talked about uh, the website. We have a new website for ISDOC and that anybody can get on it that's a member of uh, ISDOC or you know, special districts. And if we want to say you know, some, some announcement, you can do that as long as you do it in advance. And uh, then they discussed about the next meeting, which would be the uh, January 27th. And at that meeting, uh, I, I will be having Carolyn Emery speak. She's the CEO of uh, LAFCO. And uh, we met and talked about what she could be talking about and people in special districts don't have the understanding as well as we think about what LAF goes about and the procedure. And so we're trying to get closer in lining up this um, attitude and listening to what's going on and what LAF goes offering for the 22 year. And um, then let's see. What, the, date, what date is that? The 27th. Of, um, it's a Thursday and it's in January. It'd be like our general meeting, but- I have it. Pardon? Okay. <laughs> and uh, on 11-4, I attended a dedication of uh, the Neff Park, Roger Neff Park. And he was 94 years old. And so a lot of the uh, staff that 
maybe have retired even came to this and it was a good turnout and it was a good uh, time to have everybody there. And uh, then 1116, I went to a study session. 1118 uh, was um, a board meeting and that was in person. And then the 19th was a finance corporation. Oh, CSDA and on the 18th, I flew up to CSDA, we had a board meeting. And then on the 19th, next day, we had a finance corporation meeting, which I'm involved in. And then 11-22 was Costa Mesa Sand District uh, public hearing. That was it on that. Can I go right into CSDA? That's the next. Sure. Okay. So CSDA's report on uh, that, we're doing it by um, Zoom on the 14th of uh, December. And uh, we had a meeting and it was an executive board meeting it was a long one. This one, we were all here. If we had our eight o'clock meeting and then I came in late after that because I was in a room, stayed here to finish that. And what we did in this CSDA meeting <clears throat> is we, we this, <clears throat> actually, I'm sorry, it's not really, to say CSDA, it was an executive board met. <laughs> we put together, uh, the planning session, the way it will be run this next year, and everything that uh, we want to do, we want to introduce to the board of uh, CSDA in January, which we will be doing. And um, the planning session will be in uh, Coron, it will be in Colorado, Colorado, <laughs> Coronado Island. Um, on at the Marriott Resort and Spa. And it's a lot of people know it as Del Coronado. And that's where the planning session will be. It'll be on the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. People will arrive on the 21st. And then the facilitator, facilitator will take over on the 22nd and 23rd. Um, and we have a real good facilitator for that. We've used him before, so he'll be very good. He draws people out. That's it. Okay. Um, any other meetings that uh, <clears throat> qualifying for reimbursement? You can skip right over me. Oh. I, I, was, I was trying to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have no report from SDRMA. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure it's on the record. <laughs> uh, when, when Carolyn Emery speaks, I think she'll probably give us uh, an update on the municipal service reviews. I think in the spring or we're, we're due up sometime after North South County. And there's a group of five or six of us. So It'll, it'll, that'll be uh, interesting to see how far they've come with those municipal service reviews that are done with all the cities and uh, sanitary districts. 34 of them, they have to do, so they group them together. Um, I did have a question for the clerk on, me, on the meeting schedule, if you don't mind, Mr. President. Uh, so on the liaison committee meeting, it says third Friday in January, April, July, and October. The, the January meeting is on the fourth Friday, however, and that's here. That is here. And the reason why we moved it to the fourth Friday is because we're closed on the third Friday. That's kind of what, that's what the gray box, yeah, that's what I thought. So you're talking about January 28th? January 28th, yes. Okay, that's it. Okay. Um, I had a question too. Um, I was busy playing with my uh, <laughs> laptop and it wasn't working right. So I missed this part. What, in the consent calendar, we had item number 14, which was approval of the office uh, closures and what was going on. And I was just wondering, during the holiday, like say Christmas or New Year, what, how much time is given off and how much do they work? Yeah. <laughs> Repeat that question again, please. 
<laughs> what? What's your hol <laughs> holiday closure schedule? That's what I, We're right. talking about item number 14 that was on the consent calendar, but um, I was just curious how much uh, the staff is here at work and how much they're off. Uh, well, in December, they, Christmas Eve and, and New Year's Eve are the days that the board approved uh, as additional holiday pay for, for That's a, it? A staff. That's it. Yeah, those two days. Because, you know, all the cities and everyone else seems to be having a lot more school boards and they're giving them more time. I just was curious that uh, how we felt about it. No, no, we, we, we changed. Some years back, we um, gave staff New Year's Eve and Christmas Eve off. And, uh, That's it? Yeah. We, we'll, we'll just be Scrooge, right? Depends on, depends on your perspective. <laughs> I, I, I think kind of what we talked about was the city is closed between Christmas and New Year's. Have we ever thought about that? Oh no. I think they did. I think they did that for cost saving measures. I don't. I don't know the history of why they closed during those two weeks. We can do some research and bring that back to the board if that's something you know, we'll my, consider. Do they not pay the employees while they're off? Again, I don't know. I don't know if it's mandatory they have to come off or it's voluntarily. I, I don't. I don't know those. I, you know, I, I'd, I'd throw that out for, but I, I'd just be curious more than anything else. I don't, I'm not saying we're going to do that, but I'd be curious as to what what the rationale is. And well, that's what I feel. Do they pay? I mean, do they? They probably do because a lot of them are salaried employees. They're, they're union employees too. Does the State Farm give two weeks off anytime? I get two weeks off whenever I need to. <laughs> you talking about me personally or? <laughs> no, corporately. Okay. So we're satisfied with that. Well, I, I, I asked Scott to bring back some, oh, some thank notes, you. if okay. you don't mind. Thank you. I missed that part. You were joking around so much. <laughs> I know. I, I, <laughs> sorry, Arlen. And, and I'm only drinking Coke Zero. Here. I want everybody to know that. You're not like is that for your constituents? <laughs> okay. Any other other meetings? Uh, uh, that, that any of the directors need to explain? I met mine in writing already, so yeah. go along. I have it in writing, but I can't print it. So I guess I could look it up Maybe on my computer. Lot. Maybe you should go to an iPad. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Is there any old business? Uh, seeing, hearing none. Uh, is there any new business? I have a question. I saw that we that we receiving money from the special oh, districts from the federal government. Is that four hundred and forty-five thousand or four hundred four hundred eighty-five thousand dollars? Yeah. Change, yeah. So where do you, where do you anticipate putting that money, and what funds? It's it's going back to the accounts where we lost revenue. So that would be like fixture fees. It would be uh, other charges um, in the solid waste. Or um, permits, where were we? We lost revenue. Can I hear That's where we'll put the money back. <laughs> the requirements for them to, for you to put it back into those areas. No, no. I mean we can always. That was our plan. We can always come back to the board, and you can direct. You can tell us where you want. Well, I'm just curious it. if we have some flexibility. For, I mean, do you have some flexibility where you put it? Yes, as long as, but it has to be specific for the wastewater. There's a certain amount for the wastewater and a certain amount for the um, right. solid waste. Can't mix them both, but. That, that was a nice coup to get that. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, that was good work for you guys to get yeah, to the we were, we were number one in the county, right? The highest in the county. Well, only, only surprisingly, only nine special districts applied in Orange County, which was surprising. And yes, of all those nine, we were the highest. Bob, good. did you sign all of this? Yes. Um, um, any other, or, well, any oral communications and director's comments? Go ahead. I've, I've already had my chance. No, I thought this was written. Mike, Mike, we don't want to look you. I thought this was good going to all over. You know, everybody got this. That was great. That's a good trash. Uh, I had a couple of quick questions. Um, no, I just have one. Didn't you watch 60 Minutes last night? No. Alan, you're shaking your head. Do you know what I'm talking Did you see that report on the sewer in Alabama? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. No, I missed it last. I, I must have watched the one from the I previous. I, I, I guess I'll throw this at Mark and, and Scott. Um, there was a really disturbing re 
report about, they called it straight pipe or straight line sewer systems. They basically don't use, they don't put a septic tank in, they just run it out into a meadow. Pipe runs out into the, in the area and they just, yeah, literally, they just put, I mean, it's, there's no septic, there's no sewer, it's primarily in low income areas with uh, mobile homes. Mm. And they have a line that goes out past their house out in the, the woods and it just floats. <laughs> and, and it got me to thinking a little bit. I, it, it'd be hard for me to imagine that we would have any kind of situation like that. But we're watching it. My wife says, well, who's responsible for that? The federal government or the state government? I said, that's the county, I would assume. But the county is telling these people, we're not helping you. It's up to you. If you want sewer, put in your own septic system. I would imagine the public law Ooh, wow. in, uh, um, 1972 or when, whenever. But the 1972 Clean Water Act probably I'm sure applies. That, I'm sure that that does. If this isn't prohibition. going into any water system. It's just going out in the, literally in the forest, I guess. Well, if, if groundwater, I, I believe groundwater is considered uh, part of the water um, system we can, we can find the story and look at it well what the, it, oddly enough they were and i started to belabor this but it was so disturbing to watch this the soil around these homes is good for two things holding water and growing cotton the, the ground is so dense that it doesn't matriculate down into this it's it literally lays on the surface oh wow there's no chance that we have anything like that or I, I, whose responsibility is that the county well i'll tell you uh, like scott said i i'm gonna have to um, take a look i usually watch 60 minutes it's just this weekend was a little busy but um i'm interested now to go back and make sure i see what i missed if you get a chance <laughs> watch it and just it, it was really bizarre anyway I would that's think, my entertainment for yeah. the evening. no I, I would think river watch would be interested in that all uh, right you know, all these people that look at us, if they saw 60 Minutes last night, I, if I was an attorney in Alabama, I know what I'd be doing right now. So, yes, I'm there. It's probably going to happen. You'd be wearing a seersucker suit. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. And, Looking uh, for Boo and, Radley. Yeah. Yeah. Brett. Brett, did we give a comment? Just a question and a comment. Um, and I was going to ask uh, Mike, but Maybe if you don't have the answer, we can find out. Obviously, we all know about what's going on in Huntington Beach and their trash provider. Do we know uh, CRR NAR's current uh, labor agreement? Is it another two years, three years, one year? Are, do we have any ideas? It just seems because my office is in Huntington Beach and it stinks, literally, and everything else. So just for our knowledge to stay on top of that because... Uh, I'd hate to see something similar happen here. Yeah, the Republic um, just won the bid at Santa mm -hmm. Ana. Yeah, so it's, I'd, I'd, I'd just be curious, like are we two years away from them having labor negotiations, One, whatever it may be, it's just something that I'd like to know. CRNR is not, they're not the union. Well, not some right. of their drivers, some, some, of the, some of them are drivers. Right, and the, anytime any unions, mm -hmm. we could be impacted. We, and, we were talking know. to Mike Carey before the meeting, uh -huh. And what's going to happen is with, if, you know, the city of Santa Ana has a prevailing wage mm -hmm. statute, but with Republic settling with Anaheim and whoever they right. did, right. I, I'm not sure what that contract is, but all these, if you think there's a shortage of drivers now, if I was a CRNR driver and I saw my buddy over at Republic mm -hmm. making devil, I know where I, what I would do. Mm -hmm. Mike yeah. was talking about driver, one driver up there that, literally parked his truck on the side of the road and texted, I think it was Republic, and said, I quit. Keys are under the, so I think we're going to see some yep. upheaval in that. So, mm -hmm. and it's kind of why I'm bringing it up. It's, uh, you know, we well, just kind of want to be aware of what's going on. Maybe uh, Scott, when he negotiates, could bring that point up as mm -hmm. a possibility. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Good, good point. And then uh, finally, just, uh, I think it's my year anniversary up here that since being sworn in and 
I just wanted to thank uh, fellow directors and our staff here and around the district. It, it's been a great year. I can't even believe it's been a year, <laughs> but I just want to thank everyone for uh, helping me get up to speed, especially in the beginning with our staff members and uh, really appreciate everyone's uh, hard work up here in friendship and look forward to another productive year ahead. And with that, wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a uh, happy new year. Let's make it happier than the yeah. last couple in many different ways. So thank you. Yeah. Well, Mark, um, my comment is, and, and Scott, uh, we, we got substantial amount of money from um, recently from the federal government through CSDA. And I, and I think um, there's a $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill headed out. Uh, there's, there's already $600 million headed for California. Um, if what I'd like to do is ask you to check to see if shovel ready projects, you know, would be important. And then the shovel ready project that I would suggest is, is the, uh, the Euclid force main, the double, the doubling of the Euclid force main, because that'll be the biggest CIP project that we oh, have. Eldon. Eldon force main? Eldon. Eldon, yeah. Yes. We, yeah, we have two that are going to be very expensive, Irvine and Eldon in a few. So, in so those, if they, if, if the engineering, if the engineers can get those things shovel ready, if that's an important part of that, being part of that process, uh, we, we, we could save substantial money on the, on the wastewater side. How do we find out if we can be part of that? Well, I, I've been in touch with uh, CSDA and Aqua and trying to find out when are these applications due? Which department is it's, it's managing these, these programs? I have no idea which department, and right now no one really knows. Um, there's, there's a webinar coming up, I think, in the beginning of January that I want to follow. Um, uh, it's uh, regarding that on the wastewater, on, on the water side, but um, I'm still trying to find out when and where do we submit those applications. The infrastructure we're aggressive. Bill pretty much you know, we're always killed. aggressive, so that's good. The Thanks. infrastructure bill got killed. Why did that get passed? Infrastructure. That sent the senator from the Democratic senator from different different bill. The second, yeah. it's a different bill. The one yeah, we're, we're talking about bill. the better back. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. that's a that one got passed a couple of months ago. All right, yeah. great. Thanks for the question. And, and uh, President Newton, if uh, OC Sanitation, I know they have a whole group that's dedicated to following legislation. Yeah. Uh, maybe if they have anything that they can share with us, if you could, if you wouldn't mind making sure we get that. That would be helpful as well. Yeah, well, they they have the um, they have a legislative committee, and I and they go to Washington a lot. No, they go to Washington, so you know, as, as needed. Yeah, and I know that uh, uh, the PIO's office uh, that she has a, a person or two that actually um, does legislation as well, and staff that that follow that. So that'd be helpful. Anyway, you know, stay on top of it because if you know if if there, there's going to be a lot of money out there floating. That's great. That's a great. Point. You know, and on legislation, Alan, thank you for your synopsis the other day on the, the new bills. I, yeah. Thank you for putting it in lay terms that could be understood. It was yeah. a really good report. And I appreciate that. It was good. I think it was one of the young lawyers that just hasn't got the lingo down yet. <laughs> no. <laughs> any other <laughs> any other comments? <laughs> No, thank you very much. Mr. President, could I just add that in answer to uh, Director Eccles' uh, ah. comment? We do have in our contract with uh, CRNR that they are required to advise us at any time of any uh, labor disputes or negotiations or anything like that. So we're we advise early on about that that's going on. And that's part of, you know, that would be something we'd audit them for and make sure they're giving us those notices. Perfect. We should get early notice. Thank you. Let's hope we get no notice. But yeah. <laughs> okay. Any other comments? This meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Sounds good. My little brother's in the